Dios les bendiga, hermanos y hermanas. Oh, in English, greetings, brothers and sisters. Hi, welcome to Children Are Important. And today we are doing a workshop for you called Raising Funds in Your Ministry. So all children's ministries around the world, we all need to have more funds or dinero, money, for our uh, ministry. So anything we can do to raise funds and do projects and activities will help us to have a better children's ministry. So I'm very pleased that I just finished having an interview with uh, Sister Veronica Tosh, who is in Guatemala. And she shared with us various activities and also uh, her experience as a fundraiser for various uh, ministries, as well as where she works right now in a cancer organization. So she has um, a book that she has written for our ministry, How to Raise Funds and Promote Your Ministry. And I have a link for you. Here, let me attach the link so you can download this book. Here you go. Download. All right. So oh, there is where you can download the book, uh, and it is by Veronica Tosh. Okay, so anyway, I just finished having an interview with her in Spanish, and so I'll be sharing some of her tips and ideas with us today. Okay, so we have a month that we're going to be doing. Uh, during this month that is challenging you to do some activities to raise funds for your children's ministry. So it depends on what country you're in, what schedule you're on, if you're going to be going into VBS soon, or if you are in the middle of a Sunday school, or if you're going to be starting school soon with the children, then you can regardless of the schedule of the year for your church or your country, it's always a good time to have more money to use in your children's ministry. So let's just dive in how to raise funds and promote your ministry. So first things first, we want to dive into theory today and some of the points that are very specifically important for how you're going to raise funds. For example, how to work with your volunteers, how to have a strategy and planning for your children, your program for raising funds or your activity that you're going to do. Uh, gratitude toward all your donors, uh, presentations, meetings, understanding the donor's point of view, our attitude towards, attitude towards money. So there's lots of um, things we want to look at. Then during the month, we're going to have several different presentations here on Facebook Live where we're going to give you some ideas, real practical ideas for how to raise funds from a car wash to um, a meal that you may have, or just small activities to larger activities. So we want to challenge you to choose one small activity and one large activity. The large ones I just basically put in there that you are, um, is considered large because you had to set a date and plan ahead and set a date. So pick a large activity and a small activity and do one of each, and then we're going to have certificates for those who participate uh, at the beginning of October. So you will have more funds for your children's ministry and a certificate for attending these classes here online, as well as doing two projects. So let's dive in here in the book. Go ahead and download it so you can follow along with me. So we're going to start with Psalms 138.8, which says, The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. So what we're going to see is that God is with us as we raise money and we need to dedicate the work that we are doing into the hands of the Lord. And it's always difficult, right, to ask people for money. But we've got to start with a vision and a mission. If we want to start off and say, oh, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing or not, I don't, I don't know when I'm doing it or my VBS is next week so let's do something quick so we can have some money. It's, it's a lot harder to raise funds that way. So start instead with a vision and also with a plan, a, a mission, so you're not last minute. Okay, so that's the beginning. <laughs> so the Word of God asks us we must plan every project we're going to carry out. So you want to start with how much money do you need to raise for your project, when do you plan on starting it, 
How much time do you plan on spending on fundraising? How many people or volunteers do you need to participate? And do you have any experience uh, raising funds or should you ask somebody with some experience to help you out? So um, let's see here. Then we want to determine what kind of fundraising are going to be used. So there's different activities like auctions or sales or um, doing, doing, uh, selling different things, playing games, and even raffles. But you've got to look at what does your church allow. Okay, so let's dive into the principle of ethics. So today we're going to look a little bit at theory, but it's very important theory, so uh, let's just dive in. So with the ethics, what we want to see is it's important that you reflect the values of your organization with the way that you raise funds. So you don't want to damage your reputation or the reputation of the ministry or your church with how you raise funds or who is donating to your ministry. So, uh, for example, some Christian organizations may decide that they will not use any method of collection related to gambling. So, for some churches, they may not allow, like, a raffle, for example, because of the luck. So, it just depends on your church. You want to start by saying, okay, what are the rules of my church? Other churches uh, prefer not to have sales in the building, but some say, okay, but outside of the building is okay. So you want to check with your pastor first to see, or if you've already seen that your church does have raffles or they do have uh, allow, you know, a bake sale. People could bring cookies or pies or something in and sell them. If your church already has sales, then you know you uh, are, can do it. And if they normally don't, then you need to make sure you're under the authority of your pastor. And also you want to watch out for some other issues with ethics where sometimes people like to take pictures of like dirty children or very sad children and put them up and show, oh, look at this poor child. We need more money to help out. And honestly, it can be disrespectful to that child. Or if you did parents with the children, if, it, if it's a disrespectful picture, you really do not want to publish that, especially on Facebook that goes around the world. So you've got to really be careful there. I do know lots of people who um, use pictures of dirty children and use that to raise money, but it's actually quite disrespectful. You want to think about if that child were with you, would he be proud that he had that picture up there? Or would the parent of that child be proud? Or would they feel embarrassed and ashamed? So you want to be respectful as you do that, and that's part of our ethics. Okay, so here's some values to consider in fundraising. So uh, money, prayer, and time have the same level of importance as uh, forms of support. So you want to look at also, apart from just raising money, is time. As people can give their time, um, they're giving something very valuable to your ministry. And um, let's see here. What I wanted to share also that uh, Vero just recently shared with me here a minute ago when we did the interview in Spanish was um, that she had an event where they did this big event and he came up to them and said, what were the expenses of that event? So she said, well, the band that we brought in, the music group, cost this much money and then we brought in a special speaker and they cost this much money to um, have the speaker and then we rented the building and it cost this much money. So sharing how much all that money was, this this gentleman said, well, I would like you to have the same event in my area or my city and I will cover all those expenses and all the money you raise will go for your ministry. Well, that sounds great because she was like, wow, we've spent all this money on all these, um, the, the music, the speaker and the building. Wouldn't it be great if that was donated? But so then she got into researching who he was, and it turns out not only was he associated with one political organization, um, he also had a bad reputation in various um, unethical activities he had done. And so in the end, she decided they can't use the money from him because of his connection to a political party as well as his reputation. So 
we've got to sort of face uh, some of these ethics. And for her, that was a difficult decision because he was going to give a lot of money. So any alliances with politics you want to be careful for. And also another thing with ethics is um, Vero, where she works, they basically have a 15% rule where they can use 15% of the funds that are raised to, to work on actually raising funds. So like I was mentioning, uh, the cost of bringing in a speaker or the cost of, you know, the expenses of running the fundraising event. Uh, she has a rule where it stays at 15% of what is raised is allowed to be spent on fundraising. And so they're pretty strict about that because obviously it would be terrible if you went to raise funds and you used 100% of all the money that people donated to raise more funds. People don't want to give to your ministry if you're spending the money to raise more funds. They really want to have a part of actually reaching the children or actually doing some good in the community and blessing others. They don't want to be just raising funds with their money. So you've got to stick to that 15% rule or less. In fact, I was um, learning a little bit about uh, Charity Water recently where they do 100%. and. Uh, so he just has a separate account that is for supporting the ministry of raising the money and all 100% of the money that comes in that's supposed to go for water, wells, or reaching out to the community, 100% of that goes to doing exactly that. And so those who give can feel like their money is going directly to the areas that need it, the people that need it, and he's completely transparent with it, so it's, it's fabulous. So you want to be honest and you want to use your images honestly. You want to treat donors with as people and not just blank pay, uh, checks. <laughs> so as you do these different activities, you can raise more funds for your children's ministry. So I enjoy talking with Veryl. In fact, I asked her, she's basically a professional at raising money. So I said, okay, Veryl, what was your last project? What did you do? So they had a race recently. She works for a company that helps um, women with breast cancer and so they had a race and they had some various activities and this about two weeks ago they had an activity where she had 7,000 people who participated about a hundred volunteers and they raised fifty thousand dollars which is just a huge number right and she's in Guatemala so um, Guatemala is not a super wealthy country so it's a fabulous amount to raise uh, in Guatemala, $50,000 to help out with women who need treatment for cancer. So that's fabulous. So I was like, okay, Vero, you've got to share with us how do you do this. Obviously, some of our churches were smaller. We're not going to be able to raise $50,000. But actually, the principles apply. The same, the pr same principles she has for ethics and the same principles she has for um, how to treat your volunteers and making sure to say thank you and all those things do apply to even our small churches. So it's good. Okay, so let's dive into the next section here, which we're going to start looking at is one great idea is to assign someone to take pictures during your event because it's always good to have proof at the end for this event that she just had was 7,000 people participated. If she doesn't have pictures of the 7,000 people, it's like it didn't happen, it didn't exist. So you wanna assign someone because when you get really busy, it's impossible to remember to take pictures. And um, she has also a program where she gives milk and food breakfast to children who are in a poor area of the town. So as she goes into that area and shares milk and breakfast with the children, she can go invite someone to get donate toys or do something where they donate. And what she has found is that she lets the donor who came up, found all the toys and donated the toys, show up and actually give them to the children. So allowing one of your donors to participate is another way to have them really feel like the children are uh, getting the toys because they are able to be there physically and see it happen. Another thing she mentions is uh, how important it is to just thank people immediately because obviously if you wait a year and you're ready to start a new 
um, event for raising funds. It's kind of funny to, to go back and thank them for the last year's event. So you want to just thank immediately after the event so that you can, uh, they, they feel the trust, they feel the warmth, and then you may be able to ask them later for funds. And um, also she has a place where she donated, and she shared with her that they send her a birthday card with a chocolate every year. Well, and it's not about the chocolate really, it's just fun to know that she's being remembered and um, that they know that she's somebody who gives and is part of that organization and they give her that thank you. So that's kind of fun. That way you're not like, uh, oh, here comes those teachers asking for money again. <laughs> so you want to always be thankful. And also be transparent and be able to give a report of where your funds go. So you want to be thankful. You want to maintain a good image. So if you can, keep copies of letters from grateful recipients and gather quotes from positive comments that people have made about your work. So conduct evaluations of the work, provide an excellent service to the donors, thanking them. So there's lots of things here that in this book that you can download for free. I put the link here in the comments where, uh, let's see, approaching donors and printed materials. So there's more ideas here in this book and what we want to do is basically take this month where we are going to choose two activities. So any of you that are welcome to participate with us, just choose two activities during the month. So in the next few weeks, we're gonna be doing six different videos where we're sharing very practical ideas that you can use. So you can go ahead and wait and watch one of those and see, oh, okay, I wanna do a car wash or I wanna do a uh, big sale or something. So you choose which activities you want to do. One is going to be simple and one is going to be a larger event. It doesn't have to be huge, just something where you set a date and do some activity to raise mo money for your children's ministry. And then in the month of September, we're going to all do two of these events. And then in October, you can win a certificate for having participated in this class, doing two activities for raising funds, and then have your certificate for having participated um, and attended this class online. And also, you'll have the funds that you raise for your children's ministry. So in order to get your certificate, you need to share about the two events you did, what you plan on doing with the money, or how you spent the money, and how that's going to better your children's ministry. So as you know, we all could use extra crayons or decorations for our church, maybe uh, paint your classroom, a new fresh coat of paint or some chairs or even a new table or smaller decorations like a tablecloth or a vase of flowers, things like that. There's just a million things you can do. If you had the funds to do it, how would you better your children's ministry? So why don't you join us this month and let's dive in and get us some more money so we can do our children's ministry better. Remembering always to thank our volunteers, give them credit, give them lots of opportunities to participate, and thanking those who donate as well as doing activities within the rules of our church, right? If your church says no to sales, then you don't do sales. And that way you can stay under authority of your pastor and at the same time have some fresh money with which to better your children's ministry with either more pencils, crayons, chairs, any decorations, whatever you need. Okay, thank you for being with us live today. And we will see you on Tuesday with some practical ideas of how you can do fundraising in your church. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.